Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's garage, I'm going to take a bare bones Raspberry Pi, connect an LED to it, and write a C++ app that blinks that LED, show you how to do it, compile, run the code, the whole bit, all in under five minutes. Enjoy. All you need to make this work is an LED connected to one of the GPIO pins and to ground. I'm using GPIO 26 and I'm using a breakout board in the Raspberry Pi to make it that much cleaner and easier, but you can wire directly to the pin headers right on the Pi if that's easier for you. First thing we want to do is create a folder for our source code. Now I like to use a three-tiered system for my source code. A source code folder, then a repos folder, and under that we'll create a folder called blink where we will touch a source file and that will cause it to be created. Once we've created the file, we'll then edit it with the nano editor. Now, of course, you're free to use whatever editor you like, but I'm using nano because I know it comes down in the default Raspbian install, and I'm trying to do everything here on a bare Pi without installing a bunch of software. So that's what I will use. But you could also use VI or any editor, or even Visual Studio Code over an SSH tunnel, which is a topic for another day. For now, let's get to work including the header files that we will need in order to blink an LED. So the first thing we need is the wiring Pi header that will give us access to the GPIO pins. Next, we want IO stream so that we can do some basic console output and print out what it is we're doing. After that, we'll do chrono, which is our time-based thing so that we can blink the LED on a timer basis, and thread so that we can sleep. We'll define what pin that our LED is actually connected to, which in my case will be pin 25. It depends which pin you've connected it to, of course, but whatever you've connected it to, put that number in here. Next, we're going to include some namespaces to make our code a little more compact, rather than having to reference the namespace every time we use one of the functions or one of the variables from it. Now, every C application is going to have a main function, which is the entry point, and ours is no exception. So I will declare it using the standard, or very close to it, the standard prototype for the main function. Next, we'll go in here and I'll add a comment telling me that this is where I'm going to initialize wiring pi, and then once I've done that, we'll initialize wiring pi. The wiring pi setup function will return negative one if it fails. And in that case, we'll output some information to the air channel to indicate that we were not able to initialize the wiring pi. Now each of the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi can be set to either read an input or produce an output. You can't do both at the same time, so we have to decide, and of course, to blink an LED, we need to set ours as output, and so we'll do so right here. Next, we'll print a message out to the standard output, indicating that we are about to start blinking an LED and what number of pin it is connected to. After that, we'll get onto the actual business of blinking the LED. We're going to do everything within a while true loop, which means it's going to loop forever, or until the user presses control C, at which point that signal will be unhandled and it will terminate the app. But as long as the app is running, it will just loop over this code repeatedly. First thing we're going to do is digital write the LED pin to be high, which will turn the LED on. Then we will sleep for 500 milliseconds before we then set the pin back to low, which will have the effect of turning the LED back off. And once we've done that, we'll of course want to sleep for another 500 milliseconds. So let's add that code now. And when we're done with that, we will close the loop to indicate which section of code gets repeated forever. And then we should return something out of here to humor the compiler. We'll return zero, even though the code will never reach this point. I'll then press Control X to save the code and we'll save it out to blink.cpp and then we can set about compiling the code to see what happens. And of course, it doesn't compile first time out of the box. It seems to be complaining about my milliseconds declaration, and that's in the standard chrono namespace, which I believe I remember including, so let's go have a look and see why it is. And odds are you saw it before I did. I typoed standard here and added an extra D, which is referencing a non-existent namespace, so I'll go fix that, we'll save the file, and then I'll compile it again. Let's see what we get. Well, we still got a few errors. One mistake is I boned and typed uh, void instead of int for main, so we'll go and change that to be integer. And sure enough, down at the end of the file, I've got an extra brace, so I'll simply control K to delete that line, save it, recompile, and it now compiles properly, and so we can try running it. So I'm gonna run blink, and we'll have a look and see what the LED does. And sure enough, our LED, which is strapped to a GPIO pin and ground, is now blinking successfully on 500 millisecond intervals. Note that I'm playing kind of fast and loose with no resistor here at 3.3 volts, but you'll probably want to add a resistor if you're doing this for more than a moment. Hey, if you like this kind of shorter format, leave a like, let me know. 
And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, thanks. Make sure you turn on the bell icon. In the meantime and in between time, hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Do it, Glenn! Do it, do it! <laughs>